Yeah, so okay. the floor is all yours. Please proceed with the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, great. Um, good evening, uh, good, good afternoon to everyone. Um, this uh, webinar um, uh, addresses um, one of the financial issues that typically firms face. When we deal with finance, we have to take into consideration that finance is a very wide concept. Uh, this webinar is, in fact, uh, very uh, specific and, address, uh, and addresses the financing issues faced by firms and organizations. The focus will be on the, ri uh, the risk that uh, uh, organizations can incur when they fail to uh, plan properly their financial needs and uh, the additional aspect that we will look at is how to spot these financial needs in advance. In advance. The largest part of the webinar will show you a quite simple approach uh, to financial uh, planning. The logic of the webinar is not to address uh, a lot of theory. The logic of the webinar is to be very uh, practical and, uh, and useful for uh, practitioners. I will explain how to estimate the, financial, the financing needs, needs in order to access all the finance and organization needs to cover both the assets and the working capital. The approach I will show you allows oh, to cover uh, allows uh, um, uh, allows for uh, having a clear idea about uh, how to figure out uh, how much finance uh, is needed uh, by a firm in order to cover both the working capital, seeing, uh, particularly the working capital, since this aspect, even if very important, is quite often dismissed by firms. And uh, the major issue is that by dismissing uh, this aspect, firms can quite often um, incur in major financial issues later. The suggested practical uh, approach gives the organization the possibility to have a clear idea or about how, too much, how much money uh, it needs in order to implement the project. This is a very important point uh, since uh, on the one hand it reduces the financial risk of the firm and on the other hand it allows for a more effective negotiation with the providers of finance. So let's move on and start to look at, uh, um, at, uh, um, at the aspect that we will deal with this uh, uh, webinar. Research in finance focuses on the risk incurred by those who provide financial resources to the firm. This is the large, the large majority of research focuses on this. The basic financial concept that applies to any form of finance, I mean both uh, Western for, um, approach to finance and Islamic finance, is that the remuneration that an investor receives for providing finance to a project has to be linked to the risk uh, risk incurred by the investor. Thus, it is not a surprise that the focus uh, in terms of analysis of risk is mainly on the investor side. Broadly speaking, when we deal with financing a project, we have two actors that incur different level of risk. Uh, the providers of equity incur the risk that the firm, that they, they will lose all the money invested in the venture if the venture goes bankrupt. Because of the high risk they incur, they deserve to receive a high remuneration. The providers of debt, on the other hand, and more in general, the providers of non-equity finance, enjoy some protection in the sense that they are senior with respect to shareholders in case of liquidation. This implies that they expect to be able uh, to recover the finance provided to the firm, even if the firm goes bankrupt. This happens because they will be paid back with a cash generated uh, thanks to the sale of the asset of the firm in the worst case scenario. In addition, if some assets have been pledged by them, such as in the case of the asset that, ha that has been provided as collateral for, um, for a loan, they can sell those assets and recover the finance originally provided to the firm well before any other provider of finance. Because of this, the providers of debt finance typically incur a lower risk and thus ask for a lower remuneration on the finance provided. Interestingly, the financial risk is not incurred only by the providers of finance. 
the very same firm incurs in financial financial risk. That is, in the, in this in this case, uh, that in this case is mainly linked to the risk that because of this mismatch between the cash inflows and the cash outflows the firm faces, the firm can be can be forced into liquidation. Is this a major problem? Can it uh, be addressed in some way by the firm? Uh, or is it simply intrinsic uh, to, the, to doing uh, business, to the operation the firm pursues? Well, it is a major problem. In my long experience as a financial advisor for small and medium enterprises, I've met only very few firms that were struggling financially and were uh, loss makers in terms of uh, uh, profit and loss, I mean. In the largest, major in the largest majority of the cases of uh, firms that I try to support for struggling firms that I try to support and uh, to turn around, and by the largest, I mean around 90 95% of the cases, the firms um, were in fact profitable, but uh, they typically mismanaged the cash flows, or put in other words, they were not able to pay the invoice or bills on time. From this perspective, it is a mandatory for the firm to identify repayment plans uh, on debt uh, whatever form is that it assumes, that match the cash inflow the firm enjoys since the default of even few payments can force the firm into liquidation. If the firm, uh, uh, if the situation is particularly dramatic, if the firm can even be forced into bankruptcy. Actually, firms can renegotiate their payment plans. However, this approach has two major problems. Firstly, the new repayment plan has to be credible. The problem is that the creditor can easily question the credibility of the new plan. If the original plan was flawed, why should the new one be a good one? Are we sure that the firm uh, has taken into consideration all the aspects that um, affect mm, the cash flow and that can possibly previously not have been uh, considered properly? Interestingly, new plan is credible, credible as long as the cash flow problems arise that a firm is currently facing are derived from unexpected events since it was a simply, uh, um, uh, since uh, if the problems are simply the result of a bad planning, it will be very difficult for the creditor to be confident in the new plan. I mean, I made a mistake once, why should I be right now? The second point linked to the first one is that the creditor has to accept the new repayment plan proposed by the firm. As we have just discussed, if the debtor is not credible because it proved to be not able to plan properly its financial needs previously, why should the creditor help the debtor? The best solution from the, debt, from the creditor point of view is to, uh, uh, to force the firm into liquidation and try to recover the credit via selling the asset. This can even be perceived as a way to reduce the impact of any additional uh, managerial mistake. Thus, upfront cash flow planning is essential in order to reduce the financial risk. This implies that a very careful examination of the cash flow, and more importantly, when they will happen, is incredibly important for the firm success. So, let's start looking in detail that all the type of finance needed in order to finance a project. The first aspect we have to consider is that in order to implement a new project, quite often the firm has to buy new assets, new, new asset or new assets. They can be financed with a retained profit. I would say that is one of the most common approaches, particularly when the investment is not huge, and or with issuing new equity. Actually, New equity is an option that works for large firms in the case of large project, projects or in the case of small firms only when the shareholders are happy to provide additional equity. Here the major issue is that quite often in the case of small firms the, um, the shareholders do not have additional finance to invest in the venture and thus can only rely on, uh, in this case the firm can only rely on retained profit. Um, or other form of cash available and debt finance. One possible solution 
alternative solution can be uh, in order to collect additional finance is a leasing contract. The provider of finance in this case buys and owns or co-owns the asset and then gives it to the firm that pays the provider of funds uh, for uh, using it on regularly, typically monthly installments. An alternative, very, uh, an alternative, very common solution is to rely on debt finance linked to the asset. In this case, the provider of funds expects to receive funds back with the remuneration linked to the compensation for the risk incurred in providing funds to the firm. Interestingly, both the solutions are characterized by a clear repayment plan that is the result of the negotiation between the firm on one hand and the providers of finance on the other hand, be them a bank, a leasing company, or any other provider of funds. This does not imply necessarily that the firm has to pay the same amount every month, since the payment plan plans can allow for different installments in different moments in time in, in order to try to take into consideration the cash available in, uh, to the firm. Nevertheless, once the repayment plan is typically established, the firm is expected to stick to it and repay the debt regularly according to the repayment plan. If uh, the firm defaults on the repayment, it can be stripped by the asset. This is typically what happens in the case of leasing, where the leasing company has the right to, to um, take the full possession of the, of the asset and sell it to someone else in order to recover the uh, residual debt or can be forced into liquidation in order to allow the creditor to recover its funds. Thus, a clear upfront analysis of the cash flow that the project generates are mandatory in order to be sure that the firm will be able to match the cash outflows. Such an analysis does not entail both of the careful, uh, does entail both a careful examination of the amount of cash that the firm is expected to receive and when these, those cash flows are expected to happen. Interestingly enough, the latter point is quite often not properly considered by, by managers. However, uh, is uh, a detailed analysis of the cash flow and the cash inflow and cash outflow linked to repayment plan of a loan enough? To be honest, it is not. Uh, even if quite often people tend to stop the analysis at this stage. Actually, I would say this is the major mistake uh, that can have a dramatic, uh, dramatic consequences. In order to evaluate the real financial needs of the, fir the firm phases, we have to consider that once the firm has bought uh, the material, it has to process it, and this can take a few hours, but more often it can take days or months, stock the final product, and then sell it. In addition, once it has sold the final product, not necessarily it receives the money straight away, since it is very common to give some kind of uh, credit to the customer, typically 30 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, before a customer have to pay for the product that they received. To be honest, the very same logic applies to the, new, to the raw material or any outsource um, activity that the firm buys. Typically, uh, raw material or outsource activities are not paid immediately. However, uh, the credit the firm uh, is able to obtain only in extreme cases covers the firm's short-term financial needs. All in all, in, large, in the large majority of cases, firms face cash outflows before enjoying cash inflows. This is what uh, is called the working capital. In other words, the capital that the firm needs or over and above the one needed for a using in order to buy and to repay the fixed asset. It covers uh, short-term financial needs and to tell the truth, when the firm is successful, it could, be recovered, uh, it could be recovered in a very short time. It is immediately clear that the working capital needs are very different with respect to financing need for buying a fixed asset. More importantly, it is not easy, so it's not so easy to work out the amount of the firm needs since it depends on the credit that the suppliers grant to the firm, the time the firm needs in order to process the product, the time it needs to sell its product, and the credit it has to extend to customers. Intuitively, the shorter the credit provided by the suppliers, the longer the production process, the longer the time the firm needs in order to sell its product, 
the greater the credit it has to provide to, to the customers, the longer the financial commercial cycle, that is the time the firm has to wait for converting the original raw material into the final product and the cash from its sales, the greater the working capital the firm uh, needs. Keep in mind that uh, there are also scenarios where the working capital can be negative. One quite common uh, example is provided by the retail industry and particularly by large food retailers. In this case, typically the retailers buy the food and other products, but they have they enjoy typically up to 180 days of credit. In other words, they are asked to pay for the product only in 180 days. However, the retailers, the retailers typically put all the products on the shelves immediately and sell them quite rapidly, cashing immediately as the final customer does not ask for 30 or 60 days for paying it. The result is that the retailers are typically able to cash in from the customer before paying the suppliers. At this point, one can argue, fine, it is clear uh, that the firm can face very different scenarios about its working capital needs. It is also clear that the longer the financial conversion cycle, the greater the working capital needed by the firm, and possibly the longer the time the firm needs in order to repay the financial link to the working capital. However, the question is, can we work out the working capital needs so that the firm can have a clear idea upfront and approach the provider of finance with a clear and reliable figures? Is the firm able to know how much money it needs so that it will not risk to, to find itself in dire streets simply because of the lack of cash for repaying the supplier, the salaries, and those who provided finance for the assets? Reassuringly, I would say the answer is yes. In order to understand how it works, let's ask, uh, look at uh, an example. These are uh, the uh, data about uh, the example I build up in order to explain you how to uh, uh, estimate the working capital needs. Let's imagine that we have to work out the financial needs of a project with these characteristics. The investment is 350,000, whatever currency you like. The firm is available, uh, has available funds, for instance, retain cap profit or cash available in bank or additional equity that the shareholders are happy and able to provide that can cover 40% of the investment needed to buy the assets. So, thus, I would say that uh, the firm needs only 60% uh, that has to be um, of additional finance that has to be financed using uh, bank finance. The cost incurred to produce the material represents around 70% of the income from the sale of the product. All the costs are paid in 30 days. The income is estimated at 70,000 the first month and then 140,000 from month two onwards. Or, uh, from, month, uh, from month two onwards. However, the firm needs, uh, let us assume that the firm needs two months in order to produce the product. Thus, the first sale will happen not in month one, but only in month three. The, customer, uh, the customers ask for uh, 60 days credit. This implies that uh, the firm will be able to cash from, um, from the sales only, in, uh, two, only two months after the sale. Let's look at the detail, how much money we need to implement the project and how to finance it. So the first, um, the first step, is to look at the financing tool that we can use in order to finance the assets that we have to buy for starting uh, the new production. Um, to purchase the asset, we need 210,000 of long-term finance, simply because the other fraction is covered by uh, the cash already available in the firm or provided by the uh, uh, shareholders. In the Western world, it can assume the form of a mortgage or an asset-backed loan, in the Islamic um, world, it can uh, be a mudaraba, sorry for the very poor pronunciation, that is a form of finance where the provider of it does not ex uh, expect to receive the provided amount back very soon. It means uh, the provider of finance will receive uh, 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 back the money provided on according to a payment plan. Um, we have also to discuss the repayment plan and the terms for reimbursing it with the provider of long-term finance. When to start to 
reimburse it, how much money we have to reimburse it in each installment, and for how long. Then we have to discuss, we have, uh, 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 we have the, 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 to, to examine, to discuss the short-term needs linked to the working capital. In order to estimate them, the best approach is to work out the cash inflows and the cash outflows on monthly basis. Or I would say even on weekly basis is you, if you have such a, um, if you are capable to produce a, such a very detailed estimate of uh, the future cash flows. In order to do it, we should work out the profit and loss first and foremost of our project and then make all the adjustments that we need in order to take into consideration that uh, one thing are, uh, is the uh, income and the cost incurred uh, by the firm. Another uh, thing is the cash, um, the cash um, uh, related cash faced by the firm, typically cash inflows and the cash flow outflows. So let's, uh, um, in order, let's look at uh, first and foremost at the profit and loss account. In order to estimate uh, the cash needed, we should start from the profit and loss account. That is, uh, we have to record the income and the cost the organization faces. Let's look first at the income. We have been told that the firm needs two months in order to process the material and sell the final product. Thus, the first sales, um, as already, I already told you, will not happen in month one, but only in month three. In addition, we have been told that the first sale will be 70,000 um, and only from the following month, we will reach the expected standard amount of 140,000. Thus we have income that is at 70,000 in month three and 140,000 from month four or onwards. Finally, since the firm is expected to sell the product for uh, one year, we have to keep in mind that uh, we will have sales also in, more, in month 13 and in month 14, linked to the production we have in month 11 and in month 12 respectively. This implies that we have the income that is spread on 12 months but um, it starts, in fact, uh, in month three and ends in month 14. The next step is to record the costs. We incur two costs, broadly speaking. The production cost, that, that is what I call in, uh, uh, in, uh, um, uh, on the slide, uh, the running cost, and the depreciation, that is um, the cost we have um, uh, to record in order to take into consideration the consumption of the asset we use in the production process. Interestingly, we incur costs since the first month. This happens because we have to buy the material and pay the salary and the people involved in the production, and this happens in month one. The same applies to the consumption of the asset. We start to consume it in month one. Thus, the costs are spread between month one and month 12. This happens because uh, in month 12, the production is expected to stop. Now we can easily check whether the project is profitable. By adding up all the losses, uh, we, uh, the project incurs in month one and two, and the profit the project enjoys in month three and four, from, uh, from month three to month 14, we can easily spot the overall expected profit is 133,000. I would say not bad. From the economic point of view, this is a nice project. We can invest 350,000 in order to buy an asset, and this will generate 133,000 of profit in one year. Interestingly, we have now a table where we have cost and revenues that, if, that uh, even if related to a project that runs only for 12 months, in fact, are spread on 14 months. This clearly happens because of the lag between uh, the start of the production, month one, and the start of the sales, month three, since we need the time to process raw material and sell it. Let me be clear, I would like to stress this aspect because of the financial needs, and as we will uh, spot uh, 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 very soon, are incredibly dependent on the uh, timing of our cost, revenues, and cash flows. However, we should also figure out how much money, because this is our target, how much money we need in order to implement the project. We know that uh, the new plant will cost us 350,000 and 60% uh, of it has been financed by with debt. Thus, we know that we have to approach a bank and be able to secure a loan that is uh, 250,000. The question is, is this additional money enough? Because if 
the only concern is to, pro to obtain finance in order to finance at least 210,000. Okay, that's it. We do not need anything else. But is this money enough? The short answer is, who knows? <laughs> in fact, that at this stage, we do not know whether uh, and how much additional money we need. We know that the project will incur in, uh, uh, in a loss in month one and two, but this does not telling us uh, anything about whether we need additional finance and does not inform us about how much money is needed in order and uh, in order to uh, how much money is needed if it is needed. In order to figure out, we would um, in order in order to figure out uh, uh, we should, how much money we need, we should build up a cash flow table where we record the cash inflows and the cash flows of cash outflows when they happen. Let's start with the cash inflows. We know that the first sales will happen in month three. However, we have uh, also been told that our customer asks um, our customers ask ask us uh, two months credit. That is, they will be uh, will pay us only in two months after they have bought uh, bought the product. This, this implies that the cash inflows linked to the sales in month three will only happen in month five. Interestingly, this implies that the cash inflows inflow related, related to uh, sales in month 14, uh, but related to the production in month 12, will happen only in month 16. This is an, inter an interesting aspect. We have a project that is expected to run for 12 months, but in fact, it lasts for 16 months because of the lack in the, the cash uh, inflows and outflows. The next step is to look at the cost and when the um, related cash uh, outflow happens. The first uh, thing to keep in mind is that the project, at this point, is the project we have, uh, is that the project um, has incurs, uh, um, uh, incurs costs since the first month, but, uh, um, uh, but it, uh, this cost will be, uh, uh, will be paid only one month, uh, uh, one month later. Um, um, the, in, implicitly, this, the supplier uh, uh, is granting us uh, 30 days in order to pay the material and, and so on and so forth. Thus, uh, we do not have to pay them uh, in month one uh, the material we use, uh, that we use in month one. We can pay it uh, in month two. The say, at the same time, this implies that we will have uh, the, um, the last payment that, uh, related to the, su the, to the suppliers that will happen in month 12, only in month 13. This allows us to figure out how much money uh, each month uh, the project absorbs and generates. If you look at the figures, you can easily spot the uh, month of two to five, the project is not able to generate a net positive cash flow since uh, the cash outflows are greater than the, um, uh, with respect to cash inflows. Then from month six onwards, the project generates more cash than it absorbs. And the last uh, three months, the project does not incur any cash outflow, but only cash inflows. Um, this uh, allows us to figure out how much money the project needs in order to cover uh, short-term uh, financial needs. It can be easily worked out by estimating the accumulated cash flow, that the net cash flow on one month plus the net cash flow of all the previous months. Thus, the overall cash needed in the project will be 49,000 in month two, 147 in month three, 245 in month four, and 273 in month five. Uh, that happens to be the peak uh, in terms of additional finance needed. In fact, from month six onwards, the negative community cash flow starts to decrease, and in month 12, it turns to be positive. In terms of cash flow generated, the project will be able to generate 483,000 cash overall, but we have to keep in mind that 210,000 has to be reimbursed to the bank, and thus there, are, there is 273,000 cash that belongs uh, that belong to shareholder. However, we have to consider that the shareholder um, decided to invest 60% of the 350,000 in order to buy the plant, and thus the residual increase in the cash of the shareholders is 133,000. That is exactly the profit generated by the project. However, can we simply argue that uh, we needed 273,000 extra cash? The, an the answer is that it depends. Also, in this case, in fact. In the previous table, we simply included the cash inflows and outflows related to the sales of the products and the payment of the running costs. Actually, quite often the organization are asked to repay the loan quite soon. In, order, in other words, the provider of debt does not wait for the end of the, uh, or the, of the life of the project. 
In this case, we assume that the provider of the debt the finance asks the organization to repay the debt since the month at the beginning uh, of the beginning of the project. Um, from the beginning of the project. This implies that uh, the firm faces additional cash outflows and more importantly a cash outflow in month one that uh, up to now was a month with no cash outflow. In present example the um, firm is supposed to be asked to repay the loan in 12 installments of equal amount and thus the related cash outflows is, uh, outflow is 18,000. The additional cash outflow impact uh, on the overall amount of working capital needed. In fact, the previous peak of 273,000 in month uh, 5 goes now up to 361,000 in month 5. Uh, this happens because of the increased cash outflow linked to the project to the loan repayment. Practically, what happens in this example is that in order to satisfy the repayment plan that it implies to start to repay the loan on, asset, uh, on the asset immediately, the firm has to use additional working capital in order to repay the loan. The analysis can be pursued by reporting the figure in the graph where the x-axis reports this time and the y-axis the cumulative cash flow generated by the project. The graphs um, can be very useful in order to understand the change in the cash flow needed. In, uh, for example, in the, graphs, in the graph you have in front of you, uh, it is uh, apparent that in month from one to, uh, to five, the firm needs progressively more and more finance in order to finance the project. And then from, from month five onwards, the firm will be able to recover the cash. Um, let's move on to an alternative example. In this case, um, um, uh, in this, in this uh, uh, scenario, uh, the firm is asked to start to repay the loan later. That is when the project starts to generate positive cash flow. Um, uh, the additional cash flow outflow impact on the overall amount of the working capital needed uh, goes down. In this case, uh, the previous peak of 361,000 in month go five goes down to 263,000 in month five. This happen, happens simply because the decrease of cash outflow linked to the loan repayment it starts only in month five instead of month one, one as in the previous example. Keep in mind that we are not changing the amount we have to repay to the loan or for the loan or to the to the asset, nor are we changing the monthly payment. 18,000, that is always 18,000. In this case, we are simply changing the repayment time uh, that the firm uh, uh, faces. And um, this, um, this scenario shows you immediately how much important is the timing when the cash flow happens. Also in this case, uh, we can report our figures in the graphs and uh, spot immediately that uh, when the, we have the peak and the amount of the maximum amount of um, the finance we need that uh, is in five month five, but in this case it is clearly below um, 300,000, uh, while previously was well be, be well above uh, 300,000. So, uh, as you can easily spot, both the scenario present, uh, present that I presented provide the same profit at the same uh, for the for the firm 133,000. In addition, both. Uh, the, uh, both, in both scenarios, um, the, um, the, the, the project is able to generate the very same amount of cash. However, um, uh, both of them clearly uh, show that 240,000 needed to finance the asset are not enough. Additional cash, cash is needed in order to implement the project. Interestingly enough, um, they also show that uh, such additional finance is not fixed in the sense that it depends on the way the firm is asked to repay the loan. If it is asked to repay the loan immediately, that is the first month of, uh, of the production, the firm still needs additional 361,000. In the second scenario, it needs only 291,000. The difference is not marginal, 70% represents around 20% less finance. However, this is not typically what happens. Firms are charged, uh, uh, sorry, uh, um, in this case I assume that there is uh, no charging on, uh, on the loan. So there is no interest or any charge in the loan. Um, this is typically not what happens. Firms are asked uh, to uh, charge for the finance they use. But uh, this is not a problem. You have simply to uh, include any additional cash outflow related to the finance um, uh, in order to uh, take into consideration uh, the, um, the, in order to work out a more detailed plan. So let's now move forward and try to derive some general rules. I would say 
that uh, there are two major takeaways um, from uh, the present discussion. Firstly, it is incredibly important to remember that any investment linked to expansion in the production capability or that affect the way in which the firm currently produce and sell its product has an important uh, impact on the working capital. This happens because any investment impacts on the cash conversion cycle of the firm. In our example, we discuss about an increase in the working capital because of the negative income it has. Actually, keep in mind that the firm can even enjoy a reduction in the working capital because of the investment. For instance, if the new plant allows for a reduction in the production time, the firm will be able to sell earlier and will need less working capital. Thus, for getting to plan the working ca the, uh, uh, a secure finance for the working capital implying the default on the repayment and the potential liquidation for the firm, I would say not necessarily. If the firm is cash rich, rich, for example, if it can use cash available in order to pay regularly all its debts, this is not a problem. The same um, applies if the firm has uh, other projects that are already at the stage of the cash generation. In this case, the firm can use the cash generated by other projects to pay the debts and the current ones. Actually, there is nothing wrong in doing it. The only important thing is to be aware about this. Let's now uh, look at, uh, try to figure out uh, the final implications of, uh, of the project, uh, of uh, the working capital. So uh, the point is, what uh, advantages can the firm obtain by having a clear idea about the financial needs uh, thanks to a very detailed plan? Well, the first important point is that the firm will have a very clear idea about the financial needs on the short and long term. This is a key factor since it allows for a proper negotiation with the financing institution. It is to approach uh, and obtain shareholders and uh, support and uh, show the support and support in order to gain uh, to secure additional equity, or gain the support about the fact that the firm will not distribute the profits because uh, it is, uh, uh, they are, will be reinvested. Um, such a, an analysis can show how much the shareholder retained profit are used and how the, uh, uh, it is used. Clearly, the decision whether to go ahead with the investment has to be based on project profitability, first and foremost, or even better, on the project capability to generate a positive net present value. However, assuming that the project will generate a positive net present value, detailed planning will show how and when shareholders' money is used. Um, the very same logic applies to, uh, um, to when um, um, the firm approaches other providers of finance and gain, in order to gain support since the firm, uh, if the firm is able to um, support the request with proper figures, this, this can, uh, can be easily cross-checked by the providers of funds. This clearly implies an easier uh, um, relationship with the other providers of funds. The interesting additional aspect linked to, to the detail planning is the fact that uh, it provides information about the timing and the, the, the funds need, and, uh, the, the, the timing about the finance. So, thus, not only such an approach tells us how much money we need, but also it tells us how, when uh, uh, we need it. An additional interesting advantage linked to having a detail, a detail idea about how much finance is needed and when the firm needs it is that the fact that the, uh, the firm can approach and negotiate uh, with the providers of funds not only exactly what they want. Too many times in my life I, have, um, I was asked to help managers that had approached the bank and negotiated the loan without having a clear idea of what they needed. Such a behavior provided, proved to be incredibly high risk since any renegotiation is very difficult and put the firm uh, in a very weak position. So to close, uh, just to sum up what we discussed in this uh, webinar, uh, uh, we look at the, the financial, financial risk incurred by the firm and specifically the firm, the risk that the firm is not able to uh, match the payments when they are due. We uh, discuss about the importance to plan uh, the financial needs of the firm both for um, assets, for the long-term assets, and for uh, the short-term needs in order to cover working capital. And we look, I try to explain you how to work out the overall financial needs in a very simple and practical way, something that everyone can do in, uh, for, its own, for his or her own uh, firm. Uh, 
I we also um, addressed. Um, I also addressed uh, um, uh, shortly uh, the advantages of a proper financial um, uh, for pro proper financial planning, particularly in the relationship with the shareholders and the providers of other funds. So I would say, as far as I'm concerned, this is uh, um, this is it. I hope that my presentation has been clear to you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Morrow. Folks, we are now open for question and answer. So if you have any questions, you could either put it in the question box or you could equally raise your hand. There's a hand icon available on the webinar console. So if you click on it, you can even have an audio conversation with Dr. Morrow. So let me go to the first question in the question box. Uh, doctor, you pointed out that it is a common mistake to fail to plan properly working capital. Why this happens? Uh, I would say um, because uh, typically uh, 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 managers are in incredibly focused on securing the loan for or securing the finance for the assets. Um, in some way, the major issue with the working capital is that it is in some way hidden in the uh, 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 in the in the financing of, um, uh, in the finance of the of the firm. I would say um, we are if we need if we have to buy uh, a car, uh, for example, we we are aware that we need the money to buy it. We need I do not know or uh, three thirty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand, whatever we um, uh, whatever um, we um, whatever it costs. We do not typically spend too much time thinking about how much money I have to spend later in order to buy uh, the petrol for the car or in order to, um, to buy the insurance in order to, uh, to be properly covered and so on and so forth. Simply because this additional uh, amount is typically marginal in terms of uh, uh, overall amount with respect to the original investment that is linked to buy the car. Nevertheless, uh, this works as long as we deal with our personal um, uh, uh, car, but it does not necessarily work in the very same way with um, with uh, with firms, where the additional money linked to uh, running the business, uh, running a project could be huge. Uh, but people quite often make uh, this uh, this mistake; they tend to underestimate the importance of this uh, additional cash, and more importantly, particularly when the firm is uh, has already other projects that are are running, not necessarily they spot immediately the fact that they, they are running out of cash. Because if they, as I told, um, uh, explained my presentation, uh, if they have some uh, additional um, uh, cash inflow from other um, other projects, they can use at least temporary temporarily that cash inflow in order to ca to to cover the cash uh, the cash outflows of the new project. But not necessarily. This allows uh, can allow the firm to cover all the additional cash outflows. Thank you very much. Uh, and another one in the box. Uh, in your experience, how important is for a bank to be provided with a detailed calculation of the financing needs? Thank you. I would say uh, incredibly important. Um, the, the major problem uh, uh, financing institutions, uh, banks typically face, uh, is what is called information asymmetry. Uh, the management of a firm knows exactly, or at least they are supposed to know exactly what happens in the firm, uh, what is working properly, what is not working properly. Banks are external subjects. Uh, they, do not, uh, they do not have all the information that typically managers have. So uh, um, the greater the amount of information um, uh, we are able to provide uh, the, uh, to the banks, the easier for them to evaluate the, the risk they incur and so um, to decide whether to provide the, the finance and uh, how, how much money to, ch to charge in order to cover the risk they incur. Um, from this point of view, by uh, presenting uh, a clear request with um, supported uh, by uh, a clear elaboration um, a detailed analysis of when the how much money is needed and when it is needed clearly uh, provides the impression of, 
of uh, to the bank that uh, the management of the firm is high skilled, has a clear idea about what they are doing, and are on one hand, and on the other hand, they are transparent. They do not want to hide anything, and this increases the uh, trust that uh, the bank uh, can have in the in the firm, and implicitly. Um, making the uh, access to um, to credit easier for for the firm. Thank you. We have another one from Mr. Nevil Gant. The question is for an experienced finance professional. This is in built in their development. However, as all management needs to know, this should we be teaching this basic finance message in all universities or courses? Any comments? Oh, this is um, this is a, 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 an interesting point, I would say. Um, uh, in the university courses, we spend a lot of time discussing about corporate finance, about how to set up the optimal capital structure of the firm, if it is possible to have the optimal capital structure in the firm, uh, the mix between um, uh, equity and debt, the cost of equity, the cost of debt. But uh, uh, it is perfectly right. We do not spend uh, time in explaining more practical aspects. I would say that uh, what I discussed today is uh, typically not addressed uh, or very marginally addressed uh, in uh, typically uh, in, uh, in undergraduate or postgraduate courses in finance at the universities, even if it is incredibly important, simply because I, I suspect because there is no um, academic discussion behind it. It is in some ways something that is considered even so simple that there is no point in uh, explaining to students. The funny thing is uh, that uh, quite often people are not aware about this and they make, uh, make mistakes. They make mistakes uh, uh, about how to implement it. But uh, um, I totally buy the argument we should spend more time in uh, uh, teaching and training people about how to set up a proper, uh, how to work out the financial needs of a project. Or financial needs of a firm because this is the first important step in order to reduce uh, the risk the firm incur. Just to um, repeat myself, um, the the firms go bankrupt not because they are making a, pro a loss, simply because they run out of cash. The cash is the blood of the firm. And um, so a, a proper cash uh, planning, uh, uh, having a clear idea how much money uh, uh, comes in, how much money goes out, is incredibly important for uh, all the firms, very small one as well as incredibly big ones. Uh, <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. Another issue, one from Brother Muhammad al Tahibe. The question is, can we consider a capital increase a possible solution to provide money for a firm? Can you elaborate on advantages and disadvantages? Oh yes, uh, um, a capital increase could be uh, an advice, could be a solution. I mean, not necessarily we have to approach a f um, uh, 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 banks uh, uh, in order to uh, cover the additional working capital needs. We can approach uh, um, uh, shareholders. We can ask them to provide additional capital. We can approach um, the financial markets in order to uh, to find the new shareholders happy to uh, to provide to secure the additional finance. Um, the, uh, the only major issue is that, a uh, major issue, it's not a major issue, but uh, the um, typical problem is that uh, uh, um, equity finance is typically more expensive than, um, than um, debt finance. So uh, we have to take into consideration that uh, uh, the risk is, or the risk, the problem could be to access additional finance that could be very expensive or relatively very expensive, but for sure more expensive than a uh, um, bank of finance that could be uh, quite easily accessed in order to cover financing needs. Um, and this is one aspect. The second aspect is, um, this is based mainly on my personal experience as a, um, a consultant advisor, financial advisor for SMEs small and medium enterprises. Quite often, um, small and medium enterprises as shareholders a struggle to provide additional finance. This typically happens because uh, they 
have already invested a, a huge uh, a part of their personal wealth into uh, the, the, the venture. So uh, they do not have a lot of residual finance or residual resources that they are, they are able to, um, to invest in the venture. So in this case, uh, it um, could, uh, um, could be even positive to, add, to, uh, add, to um, uh, inject additional equity uh, um, in the venture, uh, but uh, the uh, equity holders are not able to do this, and not necessarily they are happy to open the shareholdings, uh, uh, the shareholding of the firm to new uh, shareholders, simply because this implies clearly a reduction in the freedom of control they uh, enjoy on their own firm. And a supplementary one from Mr. Taibe: How things will be different if the firm is a new? and has no working assets generating cash? Oh, um, <laughs> things are only more complex and more difficult to, to handle. Um, the point is, if uh, in the case of a completely new firm, um, there is no possibility for the firm to exploit cash available uh, from uh, other products. In this case, it is incredibly important, incredibly important, to plan properly and, and to be very careful in planning properly uh, the additional financial needs upfront, simply because um, uh, there is no alternative resources. Let me give you just a very a short example. Uh, let's say that I have a firm where I have already, uh, I run a firm where there is already some production, okay, and this production is currently generated some cash. If I then I start a, a second production line that clearly in the first stages absorbs cash. Now in this case I can use some cash from the old production line that is able to generate some cash in order to, co to cover the needs for the new production line. Fine. Uh, the problem is if I I uh, start a completely new uh, uh, venture. I do not have any uh, um, other providers. Uh, provider, or uh, I can, uh, I can, I can, I cannot use uh, cash provided by an alternative, um, uh, um, uh, um, an alternative product that is able to generate cash. So in this case, I have to be incredibly careful because if I'm, um, I do not. Uh, 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 estimate and do not forecast properly uh, my uh, the, the cash uh, the working capital needs. Uh, I will uh, be I can uh, be easily forced uh, into uh, liquidation at the very early stage of the life of the firm simply because uh, after a few months I'm not able I will not be able uh, to uh, repay my bills uh, the salaries of people who work for me or the invoices of the, of the providers of uh, material or uh, of services that I uh, buy in order to produce my final product. So the younger the firm, uh, the, um, uh, the, um, the more important uh, the, uh, the pr a proper planning of the financial needs in order to be sure uh, to uh, be able to uh, move on and survive the starting, the starting stage of uh, the starting stage of the life of the firm. Okay, thank you very much. And we have uh, another one uh, from Brother Ali Al Nashdi. The question is I'm not a financial man, but what is the most important steps to avoid uh, falling in a financial crisis and keep the cash flow always secured? Is it securing the cash flow by controlling the receivables towards the payable, paying real stat to have an assets, or delaying the supplier's payment? Please advise. Um, my preference is, as long as it is uh, possible, to uh, delay uh, as much as possible suppliers' payments. This is my first. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, my first um, strategy, particularly when I uh, I used to deal with firms struggling with uh, with uh, cash management, uh, the first strategy was to um, try to um, pay uh, suppliers later. The pro clearly, this is not um, uh, a strategy that uh, um, uh, without any cost. Uh, um, firms are uh, or suppliers are can be happy to extend the credit 
but typically uh, they ask later for, they charge later higher um, costs on the material they, 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 they typically uh, provide. In some way they charge to the firm kind of uh, uh, interest later uh, when uh, they provide um, uh, material. Uh, secondly, um, not necessarily suppliers can be uh, happy to, uh, to extend the credit. And the big problem with the suppliers is, um, is that the big risk with the suppliers is linked with the fact that they have powers uh, power to, with respect to the firm because they can stop uh, to provide um, uh, material as long as I'm able or the firm is able to move to an alternative supplier, this, is, this could be um, a problem that could be sorted. But uh, uh, this is uh, quite often not uh, so easy to uh, swap from one supplier to, um, to an alternative supplier. As for um, the alternative approach um, uh, is for sure uh, to um, discount our, uh, our credit. It means uh, uh, we have the, uh, the invoice, we know that uh, the bank uh, we will ca receive the cash in let's say 60 days or 90 days. We can approach uh, a financial institution and ask them, okay, uh, give me the money now, and um, and um, by retaining a, a part of the of the future cash flow for the risk you incur. The problem here is that our financial institutions are happy to do this to discount our future cash flows. Um, the, uh, the only problem is that. Uh, um, uh, is, is the link to the quality of our customers. If the customers are, um, are of high quality and this means that uh, the, the future cash flow is uh, sure, typically financial institutions uh, do not have any problem and they are happy to, uh, to anticipate the cash flow. But if uh, the, um, the, supply, the customers, our customers are not incredibly uh, good customers, they tend to be a little bit delinquent in their payment uh, or they are struggling financially. Clearly, in this case, the finance institution can be more prudent and not so happy to anticipate uh, it. Uh, cash management is incredibly important. Uh, there is, I would say, there is no one uh, final solution to sort the problem out. Um, try to, the best, the best strategy is try to pay uh, your, your suppliers um, late as late as possible, try to cash from your customers um, as soon as possible, try to squeeze the, the, pro the production process uh, as much as possible, typically exploiting solutions like uh, the, um, the, um, keeping uh, uh, incredibly low the, the, uh, the stock of material, try to sell uh, the product as soon as possible and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, it is, uh, there is no such thing as a final answer. It is mainly the mix of all these alternative um, strategies that uh, can allow uh, a firm to successfully manage the cash flow. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, people are also asking if you could refer some uh, references for the reading material which can be always share later uh, via email professor so if you could share it with us but with that we would like to conclude so